The 1995-96 snowmobile racing season was a testament to the versatility, power, and performance of ski snowmobiles and to the outstanding racers who rode them to victory in every class of competition. In many ways, it was also an emotional year. The passion and focus of ski drivers, the unending dedication of the crews, and the enthusiasm of the fans made it one of the best race seasons ever. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights that made 1996 a most memorable year for Team ski -Doo. Patented Rotax engines began their mighty roar on the grass drag circuit, where Team ski -Doo left the competition in its dust, race after race, chalking up more major stock wins than any other manufacturer. After the dust had settled at the heydays, the granddaddy of grass drag racing, it was painfully obvious to the competition that ski -Doo had stolen the show, providing plenty of excitement to the 20,000 fans who converged on Lino Lakes, Minnesota. It was the first appearance in the heydays for ski -Doo racer Bill Bickford of New Hampshire. But he became a familiar sight in the winner's circle, winning stock A, D, and E classes. And he took second in C-stock. Guy Parquet of Wisconsin also won three classes, including F-stock on an MXZ 440 model, B-stock on a 670 Mach 1, and improved stock 700 on a Formula 3. The two star straightliners also teamed up to win the coveted Manufacturer's Challenge, which featured the two top guns from each of the four brands. And there were still more ski -Doo stars shining that weekend. In the mod class, Dean Schroeder ruled with his 500 and 600 cc machines powered by Rotax engines, which he fine-tuned at his own performance shop in Wisconsin. Dean won five classes in heavy and open mod. He also won the top speed competition as he screamed down the 660-foot strip at 114 miles per hour on his Ski-Doo Mach Z. Fellow Team Ski-Doo racer Craig Marchbank of Illinois showed his continued mastery of Pro Stock, where he won two classes and was the high points driver in Pro Stock on his Mach Z-based machines. Off the track, the club ski -Doo tent was a main attraction at the heydays all weekend as ski -Doo snowmobile fans poured in to celebrate victories, get autographs of their favorite stars, do a little dancing, and enjoy the camaraderie of fellow club ski -Doo members. Club ski -Doo hospitality tents have become a fixture at many major races. Success on the grass drag circuit set a tone that was matched by Team ski -Doo stars much of the winter, where the team dominated ice drags as well. Guy Parquet took a total of eight class victories at the Lewiston, Michigan World Series of Ice, and the story was similar all season long. But one of the newest and most closely watched series in 1996 was the rough and tumble MRP Snow Cross World Series. That's where Tony Heikkinen, dubbed the Flying Finn by the media the year before, is in a league all his own. His high-flying, high-speed driving style has added a dose of drama to snowcross racing, and it's brought lots of shining hardware to the Team ski -Doo trophy case. Driving the ski -Doo MXZ snowmobile, Tony dominated all season long, eventually winning the Pro 440 class in the MRP Snowcross World Series. It was only the second season of racing in the States for the Finnish native and former European champion. At the season opening Spirit Mountain Snowcross in Duluth, Tony had his new mogul stopping MXZ dialed in just right to attack the tight, bump-riddled track with a vengeance. 
The Thanksgiving weekend brought nearly perfect race conditions. And by the Sunday finals, the track had become an intimidating series of five-foot moguls, each followed by five-foot holes. Drivers were visibly tense as they walked the course Sunday morning. But when race time rolled around, the Finnish phenom did not disappoint. He thrived on the brutal course, led flag to flag, and won by nearly half a lap. But even more astonishing was his win in the Pro Open race on his stock MXZ 440. In the 20-lap final, running against highly modified 600cc sleds, Heikinen swept into the lead on lap three. He put distance between himself and his pursuers until the seventh lap when he came off a mogul sideways, got his sled up on one ski and rolled. He quickly ran back to his sled, reattached his tether, and rejoined the race in third place. Cheered on by more than 15,000 screaming fans, he navigated lines that others weren't using and quickly found himself about a half lap behind the leader. On the back straight, he hung far left, taking a smooth line up the straight, almost touching the hay bales. While a Team Arctic duo battled each other for the top spot, Heikinen was chipping away at their lead. With five laps to go, he caught up with the front runners and stole the lead with two laps remaining. Heikinen squared, it's the same move, he's by Hibbert. Heikinen from the lead to a crash to the lead, and he does the move again, unbelievable. The crowd went wild over the dramatic come from behind victory, which even surprised the winner. After the race, he commented, never before have I crashed in a race and then come back to win it. In its post-race analysis, Snow Week magazine hailed Heikinen as the best bump racer in the world, period. Seemingly fearless racing instincts and driving skills separate Tony from most of his competitors. To keep his edge carbide sharp, Tony maintains a training and conditioning regimen to build upper body strength and stamina. Tony spends up to six hours a day in the gym, and his endurance pays off in physically demanding races like Spirit Mountain. He commented to the media following Spirit Mountain that he simply waits to see the weary heads of other racers bob lower and lower before making his move. Like all Team Skidoo racers, Tony works equally hard with crew members to make sure the equipment is as well prepared as he is. And Team Skidoo maintains a testing schedule that rivals any stock car team. Hundreds of hours are spent pushing performance systems and parts to their limit in exotic locales from the top of the Rocky Mountains to Alaska to the far northern reaches of Quebec. Another racer that likes to push himself and his machine to the outer limits is Formula 3 snowmobile megastar Mike Hool of Minnesota. Last season, he captured his fourth Formula 3 championship in six seasons aboard his Ski-Doo Formula 3 known as the Purple Screamer and he was unbeatable at the 1996 Eagle River World's Championship. Determined to avenge a second place finish at Eagle River in 1995, Poole dominated from the moment time trials began. He scored the fastest time in qualifying, running two laps in 36.66 seconds, one second ahead of second place qualifier Norman Pilat of Quebec. The first race of the weekend ran under the ESPN lights, Friday night Thunder pit Formula 3 sleds against the Formula 1 racers, and Hool prevailed. Demonstrating great strength coming out of the corners, he conceded nothing to the sleek twin trackers which are expressly designed to hug the corners of the ice oval circuit. Hool also had complete control powering down the straightaways. In the Formula 3 final on Sunday, Hool catapulted off the line and headed into turn one unchallenged. Pilot and the rest of the pack pounded through the corner. By the time Hool made it back past the flagman to complete the first lap, he led Pilot by 10 sled lengths. Hool and Pilot pulled away from the rest of the pack, though Hool was never seriously challenged. By lap 13, the lead lap included Ski-Doo Purple Screamer pilots Hool, Pilot, and Wayne Nicholson, and Arctic Cat racer Jim Herzig. Hool was about to lap Herzig as he took the checkered flag. Team Skidoo produced two additional world champions at last year's Eagle River Derby, 
including Dale Loritz, who won the Champ 440 class with his race-tuned MXZ 440. And Dave Wall captured the Formula One crown. Poole would go on to win an incredible 21 of the 22 finals he entered in 1996, earning him the media nickname, The Dominator. Also in circle racing, Chad Ramish of Team Skidoo took home not one, but two world championships in stock A and B. The first stock titles for Team Skidoo in recent years, proving that Skidoo snowmobile prowess on the ovals is no fluke. Back on the snowcross circuit, word was beginning to spread about the possible addition of yet another Finn to Team Skidoo. By mid-February, the story was confirmed. Jan Tapio arrived in time to test for Team Skidoo at the ISOC Supercross at Shakopee, Minnesota. He would join Tony Heikkinen, his idol and early favorite. When Tapio arrived in Wausau, he was already exhausted. How are you? Not only from the long flight from Finland, but also because the week before, he had won the Finnish National Championship for the third time. The 21-year-old has also won the European and Scandinavian Championships, essentially picking up where Heikkinen left off when he came to the States two years ago. Though still recovering from the grueling Finnish Nationals, Tapio didn't take long to meet the crowd's already high expectations at Shakopee. After a slow start out of the hole in the sixth and final heat, Tapio gained ground through aerial acrobatics similar to Heikkinen. He took the lead and defended it to the end. The young racer pumped his fist through the air as the crowd roared. But following an impressive qualifying effort, a problem developed. Either an on-track collision or unusually rough landing caused damage to the crankcase. The team was faced with a decision. With barely 12 hours until the final, should they simply repair it or make an engine change? After a lengthy discussion between Team Skidoo manager Tom Rager and Tapio's mechanics, the decision was made to change the power plant. A fresh motor was brought in and work on the machine continued well into the wee hours of Sunday morning. These talented and dedicated mechanics overcame the crisis, providing Tapio with a race-ready sled in just a matter of hours. In the final, the two fins came out strong early on, but Tapio bowed out on lap 14. Team Skidoo's hopes for victory were dashed when Heikkinen crashed at the beginning of the front straight. He still finished third. Then it was on to West Yellowstone, where Heikkinen would do battle for the World Series championship title. Two previous wins and consistent top finishes gave Heikkinen the edge. As it turned out, he needed it. In the final, Heikkinen pulled a huge hole shot on a restart. He got out front with Arctic Cat racer Brad Pake in hot pursuit. Heikkinen put on a virtual tutorial in precision handling as he launched from mogul to mogul, sailing through the infield. He was getting big air off the double jump and continued to distance himself from the pack lap after lap. Then disaster struck. An awkward landing off a double jump left Tony with a wrenched knee and an obvious pain. Managing to remain on the sled, Heikkinen began to slow, paving the way for his pursuers to rally and ensuring a much different than expected finale to the last race of the season. Heikkinen's huge lead vaporized as he slipped to third and then to fourth as Kirk Hibbert claimed the checkered flag. Badly injured, Heikkinen was merely hanging on at the end. Yet finishing it all in this condition was a feat in and of itself. But he had incentive. Fourth place was enough to secure Tony the MRP Snowcross World Series Stock Championship and effectively reinstate Team Skidoo at the front line of snowcross racing. Team Skidoo also reinforced its standing in the world of hill climb racing this past season when it broke new ground at very high altitudes. Racing in V-Stock, Mark Thompson of Utah made history and made Team Skidoo proud as he became the first man in history to ride a stock sled over legendary Snow King Mountain. He did it on a Skidoo Summit 670 model, the machine that has put Team Skidoo back on the map in the land of tall mountains, deep powder, and big, big sky. It was 10 years ago when the first mod machine went over the top at Jackson Hole. Many high-performance machines have followed suit over the years. 
But to see a stock sled crest the top says a lot about ski high altitude technology and the performance of ski snowmobiles. And equally as much about Thompson, the veteran mountain man who sets his sights high and made a mark on the mountain that will last forever. It wasn't the only high point of the weekend for Thompson, however, as he also won the open mod class. Fellow Team Skidoo Hill climber Kirk Williamson of Utah defied everything, including gravity, and thrilled the crowd all weekend. He soared to the top to win the Mod, Mod 2, and Mod 3 classes, and took home the coveted title, King of the Hill, for Skidoo. It was a triumphant finish to one of the most successful seasons in the racing history of Skidoo. We didn't rule in just one class of competition. We won in all classes, with consistency, and always with style. We reinforced dominance in some fields, and proved that we're a force to reckon with in all others. You might say we really hit on all cylinders in the 95-96 racing season. That goes for the Rotax power plants and superior technology of ski snowmobiles. That goes for the racers. And that goes for the crew members and support staff who help the stars shine. It's an awesome combination. But that's no surprise. It's Team Ski-Doo.